In this video, I'm going to talk about how we can use Monte Carlo simulations in order to examine the properties of estimators. So first of all, in econometrics, what we need, normally are sort of dealing with is that we have some sort of population. And within that population, we suppose that there is some sort of population process. So we suppose that there is some sort of population process, for example, yi is equal to alpha plus beta xi plus some error, epsilon i, where epsilon i might be thought to be, let's say, normally distributed with a mean of zero and a variance of sigma squared. And normally in econometrics, we have a sample from that population. And what we'd quite like to do is we'd quite like to use an estimator on that sample data in order to estimate the parameters of the population process. So we're trying to estimate alpha and beta in this particular example. Furthermore, we know if we take different samples from the population, so we take one sample S1, we take another sample S2, and sort of continue this for a large number of times up to sort of Sn, and then if we use our estimator on each of those samples, so let's say we use our least squares estimator and beta hat on each of these samples, then essentially what this will output is we'll get a range of different values of beta, the point estimate or, or beta hat or beta hat star, the point estimate of the population parameter beta. So we might get beta hat star one, we would then get beta hat star two, all the way through to sort of beta hat star and n. And the idea here is that we will get slightly different values of beta hat star because of the fact that we are essentially sampling slightly different people each time or individuals. And so we have a thing which is called sampling error and we have something which is known as a sampling distribution. So if we were to plot the frequency of each of the different values of beta which we obtained from carrying out our or using our estimator on each of those samples, we will get a distribution of estimates. And we've spoken about the fact that this sampling distribution should have certain desirable properties for a good estimator. So one of the things is that we sort of expect that the expectation of beta hat, our estimator, is actually beta. So that means that we have an unbiased estimator. And that's represented by the fact that, well, if the sampling distribution is centered around the true population parameter beta. We also have spoken about how we like estimators to have as low a variance as possible because a lower variance means that essentially you're going to get closer to the true value more of the time. And finally, we spoke about how we'd like our estimator to be at least consistent, which means that as the sample size increases um, towards infinity, the estimator tends in value to the true population value. But the problem with econometrics in general is that we normally don't know the population process. So it makes it quite hard to evaluate how, what sort of properties at least our estimator actually has. So this is where something which is known as Monte Carlo simulation actually comes very much in handy. And I'm gonna talk about how that process works now. So the idea with Monte Carlo simulation is that you have some sort of predefined population process which you yourself specify. So the idea here is that there is some population process, let's say yi is equal to alpha plus beta xi plus some error epsilon i, where epsilon i is, let's say, normally distributed with a mean of zero and a variance of sigma squared. But the difference between here and the above is that we actually specify the parameters alpha, beta, and also specify the exact distribution of the errors epsilon i. So we already know what values we'd actually like our estimator to output. So what we can then do is we can use this designed population process to essentially generate samples. So we can generate, let's say, a first sample, which might be composed of 100 individuals, a second sample of 100 individuals, all the way through for a large number of samples. And then what we can do is we can use our estimator, let's say, least squares estimator following on from the example above on each of these samples and from using least squares on each of those samples we will get out slightly different values of the estimated values of um, beta which we're going to call beta hat star
So we get beta hat star 1 all the way through beta star hat star n if we're generating sort of n samples. And from each of these different values, essentially what we can do is we can draw a histogram of each of the different values or the frequency of each of these different values obtained by our estimator. And that allows us to draw a sampling distribution for our estimator. And the difference between here and the above is that we actually know the parameter which we're trying to estimate. We know the exact value of it. So if we find that the sampling distribution is centered around the actual value which we're trying to estimate beta, then we conclude that our estimator perhaps is an unbiased estimator. And it also allows us to examine other properties of estimators. So not only can we look at whether our estimator is unbiased, we can look at how its variance compares to other estimators, for example. So we can, instead of using least squares, we could use, let's say, GLS on each of these samples. And then we could compare GLS with least squares and see which of them has a higher variance. And then finally, we can also look at whether our estimator is consistent. So we can say, well, let's let our sample size increase significantly. So instead of using a sample size of 100, we might use a sample size of, let's say, 10,000. And then we could see, if we apply our estimator to each of those samples, whether our estimator was actually getting close to the true population parameter, beta. And the difference here, obviously, being with the above, that we actually know alpha, beta, and sigma squared. So we can play around with these parameters and see how our estimators behave as well. So to sum up the benefits of Monte Carlo simulation, essentially what it allows us to do is to examine the properties of estimators. And even though that might not be necessarily interesting for something like a least squares estimator because of the fact that we actually know least squares estimators properties very well, it's actually quite handy in examining the properties of new estimators. And it's a nice toolkit for seeing how those estimators behave as parameters in the population process change.